Good day there. Uh, I've just been thinking about my old um, Gabion wall and I thought, well, it's not exactly what I wanted. I've rethought it. I'm going to build a taller one. The kangaroos are going over the top. They're smashing up the little one foot piece that I've started. So I thought, well, I might have another look. I went to YouTube. I came up with a much better idea. I saw one where a chap put two fences side by side, uh, wire ties in between, and he did a great job of it. So we're going to try another wall. I've actually thought of some better engineering points of view that you might be interested in. So let's get started. Gabion walls are a wonderful full thing here. Um, I was going to build a wall two foot high out of one foot cubes. But before we get into that, let's talk about a bit of the soil science, uh, soil engineering. Let's talk about um, some of the things about walls that the engineers haven't dealt with yet and how we can improve it. I've been and seen on YouTube a much better system and we're going to talk about that. I'm going to rip this out. I'm going to start again with a new system. Well, the old uh, wall's been cleared away and we're about to start the new one. But before we do start, let's talk a little bit of um, soil engineering. When you have a, a sandy or a loose soil, um, you need to know, first of all, that the slump angle of the soil is about 45 degrees and everything above that height is dead load against your fence or your wall. So um, that load of this wall, the, top, the soil at the top here, this soil here in this triangle is pushing against the wall. That's not all. When the, wall, when the soil gets wet, the slump angle reduces and you come down to 30 degrees, now everything above that is dead weight. And that puts an enormous force against the wall. So this is why you see people putting drainage at the bottom of retaining walls. Okay, so let's go back to our dry sandy soil. If we add some thickness to the wall, the weight of the wall um, increases the support and also reduces this triangle of dead weight that's pushing against the wall. And if you come out two foot for a four foot wall, you've got four times the weight in the wall than you've got in the actual triangle of sand. So as you increase the thickness of the wall, you're reducing the weight that's going against it. Engineers have decided that for a Gabion wall, or for any other retaining wall in that matter, um, half of the height is the width of the toe of the wall. If you have a reinforced concrete wall, it can be a thin wall with a toe and the dead weight of the sand on top uh, supports 
the rest of the soot stand behind it. So that's the, the basics of it. Now for a gabion wall, probably two foot would be what we require. So instead of just building boxes, two foot square or two foot cubed, um, let's take the engineer's point of view. You've got the toe, you've got the height, you could actually get away with a gabion wall that shape. So that's quite sufficient because the dead weight of the sand on the top is straight down. You've got your triangle from there. You've got a little triangle here and not as much weight on the wall. So the triangle is actually about there. So what you can do is you can build a gabion wall that way. The only trouble is you can't get the rocks in it very easily. So I'm going to go for one foot wide at the top, two foot wide at the bottom, two fences, and I'm going to put wire ties all around the place in between. This will also give me room to get in between and do the wire ties. So that's my aim to do it. Let's see if it's going to work. I'm not sure. I'm not going to tension the fence, it doesn't need any um, strain of post or anything like that because the, post, the uh, rocks inside will start to spread the load and they'll put an even tension all the way along. But I will peg the corners just a little bit for now. Just for a bit of stability. It's going to be 300 millimeters long.
and the bottom ties will be two foot long. Three, that's 600 millimetres for everyone else in the world. Okay, now I have to make my wire ties, so I'll stretch them out. You just do one and you get the picture. first section is going to be really tricky because it's, there's a bit of twist it I'll have to straighten out but so I'm going to use one of these gadgets to fasten the wire sheeting together and I've got an old ring spanner here I'm going to use as a twitcher to see how that goes here we go it'll hold that all right and I have to work my way down with progressively larger sections of wire. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. longer lengths on the end so the next one I'll make a bit longer two four six eight ten twelve here we go I'll skip showing you the first section all the way down um, because it's really fiddly, it takes a while and I've used ring fasteners to join the sheet mesh at the end. Uh, just using an old spanner as a twitcher. Um, you can get away with a shorter tail if you use a proper metal twitcher, just drill a little hole. You get a lot more success. So here we go, we just twitch that up. A couple of turns on there. There's going to be 160 of these, uh, five different sizes, and there we go. And because I'm on the tail end of the wire, I'm going to have to stretch it out before I go much further. But I can actually start filling the rocks up from this position, or drop them in the top, and I'll work the fence along as I go. Now, having the bottom open is a great advantage because we have a lot of foxes around here, and if I ever use this area for free-ranging poultry, uh, if the foxes try to dig underneath, the stone will dispense down into the hole and I can just top it up. Missed that one, I have to try again.
That's from the concreter from hell. Hide that in the middle. It's much easier to put the rocks in than it is to pick them up. Yeah, the crop's about three inches high now. I need to get out there and pick up some rocks so I can still see them. against the back, I'll go and knock the front back in a minute. Just got to keep this in a nice straight line, otherwise these wires will start to come around at an angle. I'll just climb over the fence. Just a little bit of fine tuning. I'm puffing like an old steam train. There's another lot in and a bit more wire along the way. Um, I'm using a twitcher. Um, just a piece of metal with a hole in it, the right size. You can make these yourself, they're quite easy. I bought one because I didn't have a piece of metal the right size. Okay, once the rocks are in about a foot high all the way along, I can probably start loading some of that gravel down in behind it and I'll work it up gradually. Also, each load I put in, I have to bump the wall into line with the post or something like that just to keep it all nice and straight. Um, cause it, and um, as I throw the rocks in at the back at the moment, I'm just pulling the wire back to let them drop down and settle a little bit. Oh. 